Welcome to the Art and Science of Complex Sales. This is a podcast where we explore how the best B2B sales leaders make the complex simple, drive relationships and revenue, and generally elevate the sales profession. In this podcast, we're bringing together sales experts, thought leaders, top account executives, buyers, industry insiders, all to share their experiences and best practices for navigating the complex sales cycle. So whether you're a seasoned sales professional, a sales leader, or just starting out, you're going to find practical insights and actionable advice that you can apply to your own sales journey. Plus, we have a bit of fun. Are you tired of seeing sales as a battlefield in which we're focusing on nothing but taking home the win? Join us today with Mark Burton Brown, Managing Director and Founder of Engagement Partners, as we dive into sales as collaboration and problem solving. Mark's take is refreshing and enlightening as we work with him through his personal sales journey, the lessons he has learned, and how he is helping transform and elevate the B2B sales profession today. Let's dive in with Mark Burton Brown. Mark Burton Brown, welcome to the show, my man. How you doing? Thanks, Paul. Doing great, mate. Doing great. Well, it's awesome to have you. So, do you mind sharing with the listeners what part of the world you're in? I'm living in Melbourne, um, but they may detect my accent. I'm actually originally from New Zealand. I've been, been living in Melbourne um, for the last nine years. Love it here. So, how big is the difference? I, like you're speaking to a dumb American. What is the? I, I can't. I couldn't tell you the difference between an Aussie and a New Zealand accent. There is there is a difference. It's probably like. For us, detecting an American versus Canadian accent, it's probably gotcha. similar. Yeah, gotcha. Maybe like a Boston, Boston versus uh, Ohio, or something like that. But we're um, intrinsically bonded through um, and the ANZAC, which is the Australian New Zealand Army Corporate Army Corps, I think. Which is, you know, we fought many world wars together under one banner, and um, we both celebrate an ANZAC Day once a year so it's very very special bond between the two countries uh you know i had i had no idea i've learned something new every day on this podcast that's <laughs> awesome that's also awesome. you also have a really cool for those of you that are there's not many that are going to be watching on youtube but he has got mark has got this really cool painting behind him that i i just have to ask about because it is it's phenomenal what where did you get that from yeah it's called my grandmother's country it's okay. a series of artwork done by Michelle and Gabby Possum. And yeah, I love it. I love it. It tells a whole story. It's about dreaming. It's got stars um, and a lot of the natural herbs and plants that they use as medicines going way back before drug companies existed. And um, what's quite interesting is that their father, sorry, their grandfather is, um, well, their father is Clifford Possum, who's a very famous Aboriginal Indigenous artist here. And his father is on the $2 coin. Australia. Oh, really? Yeah, it's pretty cool, eh? Oh, that's brilliant. That's great. Yeah. So that's Aboriginal That's Aboriginal art, and uh, that's, that's gorgeous. I'll make sure we post a picture of that when we post the pod, because it really is cool. It is cool, eh? Yeah. So I'm gonna, I'll move us on. We, we, we talked, uh, we've talked a lot about this pod and, and where we want to take it, but I do want to start with the foundations, and I, I do this with a lot of people that are on. And uh, it's it's fascinating from all people all over the world to get different definitions, but we're all in this crazy game of sales. And um, let's start with that foundational definition. What does Mark Burton Brown define sales as? My favorite word is collaboration. And so when, I, when I'm working with my clients and helping them and their sales leaders and their salespeople, I think if you can create a, uh, a situation where you can collaborate with your clients, your customers, work together to understand their problems, their needs, and work together to solve them, that's like the perfect environment. Because it actually doesn't feel like selling. It's actually, it's actually helping solve problems. So collaboration and problem solving is what I talk about every day. Nice. So how do you how do you do that? How do you take someone from a what's the is there a magic ingredient? What's the that takes someone from thinking that you're a salesperson to a, a collaborator? Yeah, it's all about it's all about the journey, right? It's all about how you, from the minute you talk to somebody, what you say, mm-hmm. and how you take them on a journey from um, discovering what those challenges they have and, and uh, working with them to open up, through to you know helping them to make a decision around what they want to do, um, and then 
ultimately measuring that at the end, like what is the return on that investment? That's that's critical. And so what type of, you mentioned your clients and you mentioned your, what type of industries do you work with? What type of clients do you, do you work with? How uh, do you work in the market today? Yeah, so they're mostly um, in B2B. Okay. Mostly complex sales where it's something you can't buy over the internet. You mm-hmm. need someone to talk to to help you understand what, what it is you're looking for. And what's quite interesting is all of my clients, they're really growth orientated. They really want to grow. They sort of at a point where, when I first meet them, where they're somewhat frustrated because they're generally already growing, they're already successful, but they they feel and think they can be growing faster and better. That's a common denominator. The other one is that they actually care about people. They really care. Mm-hmm. And so they don't treat their people as like a, a number. They treat them as a person that they want, really feel about. There's, there's a real um, want and desire to develop them and help them grow and learn. And even if they leave their business, um, if they feel if, if, if they had three to five years with them and they've seen them grow and they've left and gone somewhere else, they're happy. You know? So that's they really care about people and they're frustrated with their growth. But so, all of them, all of them are already growing. All of them are already, already growing. Already growing. Yeah. What in, what industries? Do you mind me asking? Because yeah, this is a pretty specific ICP that you're describing right now. So well, it's just, it's fascinating to me how different how people describe their their ICP and how they work with it. But what what type of industries do you work with? A lot. Eighty five percent is business to business, and within mm-hmm. that, they're everything from building industry, um, medical industry, chemicals, quite diverse. Quite diverse. Yeah. So I, what I heard from you is, is when I, this ICP, so many people think it's all, so many people think ICP is around demographics and specifically, but I'm hearing, I'm hearing a lot more, even past psychographics, like people that need to need and want to and strive for collaboration that, you know, have growing companies that are looking to get, looking to get better. They're looking to treat their people well. I mean, I'd say that is a qualification list if I've ever heard one. Yeah, it really is. And um, when I explain to people, and I sort of use that terminology to explain what I do, because I often get asked that, what I find is interesting. People go, oh, that's that's nice. Or they go, wow, that's me. Yeah. <laughs> that's me. You've just described me. And typically um, people end up working. So it's quite interesting, isn't it? Just you know, when you ask what you do as a salesperson to really um, nail it on it, not just um, – industries but mindsets you know and where you are in your journey of growing your business if you can nail that um and it resonates with people then it's a great start to potentially working together well that's that's one of the it's funny we we, you know full transparency we had this we had a conversation right before this and um we had a guy on our team we have our icp dial pretty dialed in but he the way he defines it is really he calls it Sales sickos. And people are like, what are you talking about, sales sickos? He's like, people that are absolutely passionate. They are absolutely 100% passionate about sales, about the process that it takes to grow sales and the everything that they're, uh, everything around that. They want to invest time to get better. They want to invest time. And that's, that's us, right? We're not a, we're not a CRM where we, we, we do things a CRM does, but we truly find the people when we work really well with them. It's that sales, ex, the person that absolutely is passionate about it. So how do you processize that? Like, how do you, you have a very specific ICP. How do you then take that and put that into a process into finding those people? So are you talking about my business or um, my client's business? I guess any, I guess any yeah, your business to start, and then we could dive into, in general, sales businesses and clients. Yeah, one of the things I'm really hot on is um, qualification. And disqualification is even more important because I reflected over you know the nine years I've been running this business, how much time I've wasted with people that weren't the right fit. You know, it doesn't, there's nothing wrong. You know, there just wasn't the right fit, if that makes sense. We were never going to work together for whatever reason. So I think um, having that 
understanding of who the who the ideal person is or company is you want to work with is critical because it saves a lot of time. I'll give an example with um, one client I helped. They're, they're a small team, only seven people. They sell um, forklifts and trucks. They were um, wasting a lot of time with people that weren't placing any orders. Mm-hmm. So they would answer every inquiry and just you know do their best to really try and help that inquire that person that was inquiring the business that was inquiring we analyzed it and worked out that actually most people it was quite interesting most people that inquired online were price shopping they only closed five percent of those opportunities what they realized when they met them face to face was they would close like 50 percent. so we just made a disqualification or qualification rule was if they're willing to meet us we'll keep going through the process but if they're not, we stop. You know, they're just wasting our time. We we gained the equivalent of two salespeople back in the business by doing that. And really, you know, it took a lot of stress out. It took a lot of, you know, salespeople. We're all optimists, aren't we? Anyone comes and asks us, "Oh, can you help me?" We'll always try and help them. We always think the best. We always think this is a great. You know, we can help these people, uh, and we know we can. But you know. How do you decide who you know, needs and wants your help versus those that are just looking? It's quite interesting. So I think it's qualification is important, but disqualification is more important. It lets you slow down and spend more time with the people that really need and want your help. Well, tell me about, dive into the, dis, the, the difference between those two things. So qualification versus disqualification it's 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 looking at a very similar thing through two different lenses tell me why you why you focus on that disqualification and why you bring that up as so being so important it's so important because uh, we can waste a lot of time working with you know people that aren't ready for us or aren't um don't have you know aren't open they don't mind i have a growth mindset but they're more of a cost mindset it just wastes their time and theirs as well so um, it just, what I find as well is it, it, it removes the busyness. Mm-hmm. Whenever I hear a salesperson say, I'm really, really busy, I'm like, what are you busy doing? You know? And um, I think it's so important. And it's, it's not um, dismissing anyone. It's just saying, hey, right now, what we're doing and what we offer doesn't fit with what you're wanting. So let's just agree we'll stop here. And if it changes, let's catch up again and, and um, talk again. So, it's, so what the way you handle disqualification is quite important too, isn't it? What do you think, Paul? Like, you, you, you know, no one wants to be dismissed or um, told they're not important, right? So the way we do it is really vital. Well, in that, I'd like to dive into that with you too because I think you and how we coach along these lines and how you – well, how we, how you coach along these lines, because a lot of times um, you can have a, a perfect prospect on paper, right? And they, they are that perfect prospect. They have the perfect number of licenses or the, the right number of employees or the right, they're in the perfect industry and they have a budget and they're, you know, whatever those qualification factors are. And you've, you've uh, weaned yourself through those and you've gotten, you're like, man, I got a paper, a perfect paper prospect, Right. And so many salespeople, they'll do that. They'll go through that checklist and they'll get that, but they don't know how to flip that other side of the coin, how to actually disqualify people. So how do you, how do you coach them on that and how do you work with people along that? It's developing metrics that you can, like questions you can ask yourself with really logical answers. And uh, you're probably leading me to talk about membrane here. <laughs> no, I'm actually not. There's no, that's not a lead. I promise. I'm just, I really am like, how do you coach? Because one of the things I love about yeah. Membrane is the qualification tool. Okay. It is phenomenal. And ever I show my clients that have got clients that use Membrane, mm-hmm. it is like such a good tool because you just you figure out what the questions are that you want to ask yourself to qualify, disqualify, put them in, and it gives you a score. Mm-hmm. And then you can rate, well, how important is that opportunity to work on? You know? So you can prioritize it as well as disqualified. I think it's just brilliant. Um, one of the really good things about Membrane I love is that. Well, I appreciate the shout out, but I'm still going to, I'm going to push you a little bit more on this. Cause I, I really want to like, 
I have a perfect paper prospect, right? It, 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 everything's right about it. What What are the things? And is it different for every enterprise? Is it different for every opportunity? Like, what are the things that that point out that, oh my God, no, don't waste time. Are there activities that other people do on, you know, I mean, what do you have any yeah. specific ones? It's different for every single client we work with. Okay. So we, we work it out. Um, so we look at who are the who are the clients in the last twelve to twenty four months that we've we've started working with that were really great to work with, yeah, really collaborative and really um, growth minded, and you know we really enjoy working with them, and that's sort of that helps us define what is the the place we want to be versus who are the people that we you know didn't end up working with that maybe we didn't enjoy the experience with, and and so it's learning from experience. And I think that's that's the key in molding it over time. And it's one of the things I say to all of the clients we work with is this is a journey. You know, we're what we think today is <clears throat> is the right way to to work could be different tomorrow because we don't know what we don't know. And the only way to know what to know is to try things. And the other thing I coach on is it's actually it's really good to make mistakes. Because if we make mistakes, that means we're trying. If we don't make mistakes, we're not trying. And the other thing I coach on is stop saying it's okay to make a mistake, but don't make it again. It's the worst thing you can say to anyone because that doesn't make anyone feel safe, right? If you've got an adventurous, open-minded salesperson or sales leader that wants to try and push forward and do things, let them make mistakes and celebrate those mistakes and think about what did we learn from them take this forward as part of our process of just raising the bar. I like to call it raising the bar. Well, that's uh, that's so coaching and coaching through mistakes is, is extremely powerful. Um, how do you, like, how do you, I guess that's another part of the people that you're working with. How do you get them to walk that journey with you and, and feel safe and, and fail forward and, and um, yeah, what are some of the tips you have for managers that are doing that today? What I've found works really well is not coaching on what went wrong, coaching what went right. So um, I love it when, um, you know, client salesperson, sales manager comes back and says, oh, wow, we just, we just landed this client. It's the perfect client. They're just they're great to work with. And um, we're just so excited. And, so what we do is we we go back and look look at the process. What what did we do well? And we find all the things we did well, all the things we did well, and we just go, wow, that worked, that worked, that worked, that worked, that worked. And it just builds um, it builds their confidence. And then we go, okay, what's one thing? Even though we won this, we won this opportunity, and we're going to work with this client, and they're the ideal client. What's one thing if we could do it again? we do differently, just one. And then they, they there's always one and uh, they'll choose one. And so I love that process because that of, of sort of debriefing because it focuses on catching people doing things right. Mm-hmm. It reinforces the importance of a process, the consultative sales process. And it looks for one thing that you can just take away and keep top of mind to try to do differently next time. That's a great, uh, it's a great point because most of us look at it. I'll, I'll put myself in that category, right? I, I'm, I'm always looking for the, what can we do better next time? Yeah. Right. And I guess, and look at all the steps and all the different things, what we could do better next time. I think what you're saying is celebrate the, celebrate the things we did really well first yeah. and then go and, and don't, don't focus on too many of all the things that you could have done better next time. Yeah. I used to be the worst. I've, I've had a huge career in sales. I've run sales teams across Australia, globally. I worked in Paris, uh, Hong Kong, worked there, ran sales teams across Asia Pacific. I was the master at catching people doing things wrong. Well, let's dive into that. Tell me about your, cause that that's, one that one thing that, yeah, let's think, it's one thing we skipped over was your background. So let's dive into that right now and then tell me about that journey of how you transformed your coaching style based on it. 
Yeah, I was, um, I reflect and I, I tell this story to a lot of my clients. It's that, um, yeah, I was a really good salesperson. I was a crappy sales manager. I was promoted because I was the best in sales. And I had no idea how to manage and lead and motivate and coach people or, or, and how to hold them accountable in a healthy way. Mm-hmm. And it really wasn't until um, about 12 years ago I got introduced to Objective Management Group. So I, I was, you know, running a big sales team across Australia and New Zealand. And I then got insights into, wow, this, this is what coaching means. This is what motivating means. This is what accountability means. It really, and so I've been on a journey since then to, to um, learn and get better at what I, what I do. I, there was a recent webinar that they did which talked about um, how, how managers can, what we do impacts how coachable people are. Makes sense, right? Mm-hmm. What they said is if you've got a, great, a healthy relationship with your salesperson, if they trust you and they respect you, they're 33% more coachable. So, you know, it's all about those three things. And the other one that I've learned recently through another, someone else that mentioned to me is if if uh, you put the team first, that's another dimension. So you put the team ahead of yourself. Um, they'll do, they'll work really hard. So you took that journey from, from top performer, traveling all over the world to crappy sales manager to, yeah. <laughs> to 12 years ago, you find OMG. And then what makes you, what makes you then jump out and say, yeah, I really want, I want to be a, an incredible sales coach. Like, how do you, how do you, you can find something like an OMG and you could do nothing with it. Right. Yeah. Uh, what, what made you make that leap? I, it was just like light bulb moments went off in terms of, the findings that came from the analysis mm-hmm. that like sales DNA, you know, I, I needed to be liked. I, I was, I was the guy that um, got invited to all the clients Christmas parties, but never got my fair share of their business. You know, <laughs> when I started to realize um, how that was holding me back from having great conversations and following a really sticking to a process, when I realized that, and it was more important to be trusted and liked, but ideally trusted and liked. That just changed it for me. So, so it was self it was self transformation, and then it's like, okay, I'm gonna give this to like what takes that the next step? Be like, I, I want to give this to other people too. Yeah. And we get we get um, we get amazing results just coaching on um, the, the journey you take your client or prospect on. Mm-hmm. Taking the best journey you can take them, and um, in a re- recent example, I've been working with a client for two and a half, almost three years. They've been going ten years and flatlining their revenue. We used we took the OMG, researched all of their team, and helped them develop personal growth plans for all of them. We developed the sales process and coached them on it. They have doubled their revenue in the last two years. Oh my gosh. Doubled in a flat market. So they're just out selling. Yeah. It's just, um, there's a lot obviously behind that. It's not as simple as that, but um, it works. It works. Well, let's see if I could pick up everything that you're laying down. I'm going to try and uh, try and summarize these at at different points in a conversation. But, you know, we, we talked about really early on the, the importance of, qualification versus disqualification so yeah. to do to do that we need the attributes and the questions and all that we then talked about uh, how to how to coach on qualification and disqualification and other things and then that led us to your journey and and really diving down into you know going from going from sales manager to a, a, a true sales coach by getting some actual data to be able to coach people on and then so how do you take that from that that initial data that you get, and I am leading you somewhere on this one, which well, I'll just give the give up the ghost, which is that sales process. Yeah. Like we've talked about that is is tying those that talent and those skills to that repeatable process that you could coach on all the time. Yeah, um, how do you how do you help people develop those sales processes? Are you a 
I got a Mark Burton Brown way type of guy. You, you got to do it this one way and you always, this is the sales process you use, or do you go in and you find it's more effective to help people and co-create sales processes uh, within an organization? It's a good question because I've had so much experience that I know what the process more or less should be. Mm-hmm. Um, but the worst thing you can do is go and tell people. So yeah, we get, we get um, them together and help them figure out what that process looks like. So I just facilitate that. Okay. But it's their process, it's not mine. And I think that's really key. And then, um, um, you know, having um, tools like um, Process Builder or whatever just helps as well. But it's got to be their process, it's not mine. And I, that's the advice I give to any sales manager is if you want to build a process, don't write it yourself and tell your sales team, here it is. It's the worst thing you can do. Get them involved. And it takes time. You know, it might take you know, a couple of months, an hour a week, or it might be a day, and then you meet again to review it a week later. But they have to, they have to um, be part of it. And and you've got to let them have time to debate it and discuss it and, and form it. And then the other key thing is once it's documented, that's, a point in time right now, let's go and try it. Let's go and see how it works and keep refining it. Let's continually refine. And then what we find sometimes you go, well, here's a different target market. We need a different process. We need to adapt it for that target market and that target market. So one process doesn't fit all. That's the other thing I'd say. You know? But we start generally start with one and then we develop others. And that's where you need a system to be able to have as many processes as you need, depending on that target market, it's really yeah. important. But don't treat everyone the same. I've made every. It's funny in 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 these uh, podcasts, and this is another one. Like it's funny what what hits my head and what I focus on is immediately what comes in is that head trash. Like it is actually this is an OMG thing. It's also another <laughs> thing. Like oh my gosh, I've made that mistake. I'm so terrible. I've 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 dictated a process, you know, and then. Like, wait a second, I don't need that head trash. It is a mistake. There's the future. So, but I have, I've done it both ways. And I've um, made that mistake of forcing a process that nobody understands down people's throat. Yeah. And uh, because you're the smartest person in the room, right? That's what you, because you're the sales manager, which is complete and total BS, right? You get zero respect that way. And, um, uh, and nor should you, you know, it's just, and it doesn't get followed, and then you get pissed off. Why it doesn't get followed? Versus, versus maybe start with a framework, but then involve everybody within that framework. It's just a really powerful. So I, I applaud you. That's a really powerful exercise to be able to do that, and develop that, uh, especially yeah. co-create that value with people. Do you find that that helps with accountability when they co-create a sales process with you? Hundred percent, hundred percent. And then the coaching conversation is so much easier, right? Mm-hmm. How, you know, how did you go with that client, that opportunity? Um, well, you know, I did this, did this, did this, did this. Great. You did all of that. That's awesome. What, what do you reckon you can do better? Oh, I know I should have done this and I didn't. And that could have made the difference between the outcome. Yep. So, yeah, otherwise, um, otherwise, it's sort of like a telling conversation rather than a coaching conversation. If that makes sense. Yes, yes, it makes sense. <laughs> I used to be a great sense. teller. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm sort of telling now too, by the way, which, um, but yeah. Um, I know that's so you're supposed to be telling now. This is your platform to be able to tell. Right? Uh, but no, I get it. I get it completely. And <laughs> I feel like I'm on a, in a psychologist chair instead of a, on a podcast host, but it, and the sales managers and the sales leaders and the revenue leaders and all those that, that keep going back to the, you know, I love what you said earlier is, is uh, not to tell people that they can't make the same mistake twice, twice, because guess what? You're going to make the same mistake twice. Yeah. Now, if you're, if your manager comes or your coach comes back to you and coaches you how to through it like two, three, four times, and then you're still doing the same thing. Okay. That's a different, but, that's right. but every sales and revenue leader out there is, is listening to this being like, yeah, I can improve my coaching here. Or yeah, I can do that here. Um, I'd say to any sales manager or leader that says, you can make a mistake, but don't make it twice. 
stop saying that. Stop saying that because you, if you think about it psych- psychologically, you're actually not making people feel safe. Mm-hmm. And we need to feel safe if we're going to like put our neck out and try things. We really need to feel safe and supported. But like you said, if it gets to five or six times, then maybe it's a different conversation. Yeah, maybe it's a different conversation. That's where uh, <laughs> you can use our you can use our coaching cockpit that's coming out in a couple of months to show that you said it five or six times. No, that that's a shameless project pit, product pitch. Um, <laughs> But no, I, uh, I do truly appreciate uh, this conversation and our partnership. And one of the things that I, uh, I want to make sure is that people know how to find you. So how do they find Mark Burton Brown if they're in, the, the, if they're in Australia or, or in need of anybody that uh, provides your type of services? Um, you can find me on LinkedIn, Mark Burton-Brown. <laughs> there aren't many of us around. Uh, that's probably the best way. Or um, yeah, that's probably the best way. Okay. Contact me, contact me there. LinkedIn, and, absolutely. And then any any final thoughts that you have relative to any of the topics we went over? We went through process, coaching, disqualification, qualification, anything that you want to to wrap us up with? Yeah, I think um, I think uh, if you're a sales manager and you're trying to figure out how do you raise the performance of your team or what I like to call raise the bar, think about um, the journey you're taking your clients on and really it's like a checklist right what is the perfect checklist then coaching your team on how to try to follow it and forgiving them if they don't do every step you know don't beat them up just but over time they'll get better and better at it and if you can help those prospects or clients make a decision then your business is going to thrive it really really is and it's going to make it more enjoyable as well for the sales leader. It's less stressful. Sales people less stressful. Um, yeah, that's that's what I re- that's what I see. I've seen it a few, quite a few times. That's what I recommend, and just believe it'll work. And it's nothing. I think um, George did a post about um, sales training recently, and he said uh, it's not a, it's not a one day thing. <laughs> it's not a one day event. It's a it's a it takes time takes time and you've got to be invested and committed and just believe in it so uh, i'm 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 not going to end right yet because something there you said like that is like the anti uh coffee is for closures glenn gary glenn ross attitude right so it's the it's the absolute opposite of the boiler room Uh, don't f up don't do this do you know so you're saying grace grace is critical in sales and learning is critical in sales, continual, ongoing coaching and learning. So I thank you so much. Your take is extremely refreshing, Mark. I love it. I absolutely love it. And anybody uh, that listens to this, I'll make sure that we uh, post it on on Mark's LinkedIn and I'll tag him. And also he's Mark Burton Brown on LinkedIn uh, with Engagement Partners. And he is uh, he's down under. So if anybody can get in touch with him down under, that would be fantastic. Thank you so much for coming on, Mark. It was an absolutely awesome show. Can't wait to publish it. And uh, with that, uh, we'll say goodbye to everybody. Thank you, Paul. Absolutely. Really enjoyed it. Keep shining bright, Brady. We'll talk soon. (laughs) Awesome. Thank you so much for listening to the art and science of complex sales. This podcast is sponsored by Membrane and our partners from around the globe. Here at Membrane, we believe that B2B sales is at a crossroads. Due to decades of quantity-based prospecting, information overload, and really a shift towards efficiency over service and pitching over leadership in sales, customers are saying enough is enough. They're tuning out average performers and choosing to take most of the buying journey on their own. This results in up and down sales results, forecasts that are all over the place, and salespeople that are half committed due to the fact that they're having poor results and they have an inability to truly connect with customers. We believe the road successful companies are taking to combat this is threefold. Number one, training to create leaders and executives across all areas of the team with strong habits and sales methodologies that bring value. Number two, technology. Technology that focuses and helps a salesperson succeed and reinforces great habits rather than wasting their time on filling out fields for reporting or wasting their time on spamming customers that have no interest in ever buying. Third, talent. 
And I'm talking about talent that's empowered and emboldened to make a difference for their customers and their companies. So where are you on that journey? Membrane and our network of partners across the globe are here to help and to elevate the sales profession. We streamline critical technology by combining CRM, training and enablement, and more into one seamless platform. We drive best-in-class methodologies through our partners. They provide the top thought leadership methodologies and resources from across the globe. And our collective efforts are dedicated to recruiting, training, coaching, and empowering, and measuring the habits of the top teams in the world to ensure success. Join us at Membrane.com to learn more. And thank you so much for listening.